Good afternoon YouTube, Ian here from Cool Ice Charge Case and Power Supplies. Hope you're all safe and well and uh, enjoying your day wherever you are today. I want you to make another quick video of the second large charging rack build that I've just completed. Basically, um, it's, a, it's a copy of the first one I've already posted with regards to the video. But this is actually the first time that I've actually got all three chargers in the rack and obviously working because um, obviously we were waiting for the PL8 Duro touches to arrive and it's very difficult for me to get the screen but yeah I'm worried about setting any presets because the customer's going to do that gives them good practice with the bump and obviously the interfacing with the charger but basically this is the first time I've actually seen the unit completed if you like and ready to use um, because the, the first one Essentially, we only managed to get two chargers quickly, so that's obviously what they're obviously working with that one at the moment. We're obviously, with two chargers, and in fact, the third one is actually there languishing on my CNC router table at the moment. Um, again, the, I had four chargers sent to me, so one's gone in this, so that this uh, module then completes the first rack, and then obviously, then the other three chargers, then of course, then go in the second rack, and we've got another five. PL8, Reva Electric's PL8 Duro Touch Chargers coming. Again, another three to go in another rack, exactly the same as this. And then two that are going to be built into um, more travel friendly charge cases. And I might try, we're going to obviously try and keep that so you've got a little bit of redundancy there. So the whole idea is obviously the, the racks are obviously the, not the simplified version if you like, but the easier to cart around module, even though it's big and heavy. Um, it, it charges a lot of batteries all in one place so the, the plan is to try and keep the two spare chargers as quick interchangeable units so we I don't know what I'm going to do there yet because I haven't got that far in the design I might look to replicate this sort of setup within a charge case kind of thing so this can literally just slide in and out of a, of a carry case and then of course then when it's not needed it can be slid in here I'm not sure yet or the charger itself and obviously will be set up the same so it can very quickly if I turn back to this one with the removal of obviously four screws and obviously then disconnecting the connections the charger can then come out of this one and obviously another one put in its place so say one of the modules that one of the chargers in one of the modules starts to act up they can easily swap it out on site with the removal obviously of the the screws down the side that module then just slides out disconnects with one AC lead on the back of it as I showed before and it can be worked on on the bench. So, again, uh, nothing really special here to see, I suppose. Um, the 4S LiPo that I've got is a very old one, and I think it started life as a 5S. I might be wrong, or a 6S, and I made it into a 4S. It's a little bit puffy, this, but I don't use it for anything. It is just for test purposes, and it's way too big to fit in the holes, so that's no good. I think it, it doesn't help, of course, with the very thick heat shrink I've got on it either, so that doesn't work from that perspective but we can obviously do a rough give you a rough idea of what would go on obviously the, the lipo was obviously the pigeonhole should I say is size for the lipo to slide in so oh I'm actually I've just forgot myself there I'm actually having to use an adapter so I can't show you how that works because the adapter is behind me and I'm not going to put the phone down to go get it but basically the XT60 will plug in the balance plug will plug in and of course then it'll only go one way so boom in it goes and there'll be a battery in each of the pigeonholes and then of course then the charger then can be set and controlled either via the little touch screen on the charger itself or they you obviously got a couple they've also got three tablets the Samsung S7 tablets I think they are off the top of my head they're the, 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 the nice very nice Samsung units so they're obviously going to be used for the wireless monitoring and touch interface as well from that storage again at the bottom as you saw with the pull-out drawer here, this is the one that's obviously earmarked for the um, tablet to obviously be stored in. So we got, I put a USB charger in the corner, and obviously that's a mains powered one, so that obviously takes feed off the back. And then we per then I purchased for them some um, magnetic charging leads. So basically that'll plug in, and then of course then this little interface then also just magnetises onto the little dongle in the side that's obviously connected in the side of the tablet and away the charging goes 
they've also put in here obviously what came with the charger so you've got the, the pack of bump tags that they give you with it and obviously then the USB leads for any connections to a PC and stuff uh, obviously you've got the the little keys there to lock this drawer which I obviously put in there currently and the other thing I did get um, was a, a fuse tester actually this is something I thought about later down the line it, it just kind of works it's a little bit too big for the blade fuses I'm using because I'm using the mini ones but it, it, it works on the connection points basically as I showed on one of the other videos and obviously any photographs obviously there's fuses on each of the XD60 outputs kind of thing so there's two fuses here two fuses here two fuses here blah 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 and so on and so on so if there was any issue with one of these fuses and you have to obviously take the module out to, te to check it in this instance uh, Steve Smith did design them so they were on the front so they could easily be checked and changed from the front but in conversation with the customer they preferred them to be on the back as Steve Smith put it you, it over complicates things a little bit because then you have to take the module out to service the fuses and check if anyone's if any one of them has blown for whatever reason um, but in the customer's eyes they would prefer that it kind of took a little bit of the um, meddling out of it I think would be a good word to use so you would then actually physically have to take the module out and concentrate on what you were doing and checking it so this little fuse tester it's got its own little power supply it's got its own little button cell battery in it I think and if the fuse works and the terminals make continuity across the fuse the little LED that's on top of it lights up so we got a couple of those to try. I've actually got one for myself and obviously I've got one here that's going with this case. So with a pull-out drawer. Originally with this, and we probably still will later down the line, we were going to get some obviously um, high-density foam. And then of course then I was going to use the laser cutter then to uh, cut it to shape and obviously size. And then of course then have a cutout then to suit any um, additional uh, battery checkers, for example, and obviously the tablet. So when it was in... If, if the tablet and any other associated equipment was left in the drawer it a bit like the tool chest kind of cutouts you have locations for every single one of your tools that was what we were going to do here but we haven't done that yet because we re really wanted to use the fire retardant foam and you have to buy it in quite large quantities and it was quite expensive then when doing that so we've not gone down that route quite yet um, but that is obviously something we can add to these units later down the line if need be. So that's the one you draw, which is quite handy. We put it kind of like, I'll say belly height with my beer belly kind of thing, but it's obviously um, uh, belly height. So obviously then if the tablet is standing on it, it's easy to work on. You don't have to bend down, you don't have to stoop down, apart from obviously when you connect the batteries to uh, the other two charging modules, which are obviously lower down. And again, we've obviously got storage. Now then, see if I can do it. I think one of these, there you go. They are quite new and still quite tight to pull out. Oh yeah, these ones obviously have the little catch on them as well. So when you slide it in. So we've got storage at the bottom, which is quite nice for, I think they're gonna put some batteries in there, I might be wrong, and some obviously some power leads and everything else. But yeah, this one now is ready to go. I'm going to get the front and back cover out of my bottom shed and obviously then seal this one up because it's being collected tomorrow so that can obviously be in service and of course then with the the third and final module for the first rack that's going to be a combined total of just that well yeah 96 batteries capable of being charged at any one time because obviously you've got um oh, now you got me <laughs> it's eight and eight 16 16 and 16 so of course, and then the other rack is identical, so 16 and 16 and 16 again. So yeah, they're, they're, they're doing quite well with one of the racks actually. So with the two, and then eventually then the third, which, I'll, which obviously I'll start potentially machining parts up for that one at the end of this coming week. Um, yeah, they're, they're certainly not gonna run out of charging power and they need it. Because they've now gone, they've now placed the order for the additional 150 drones. So instead of having 150, they're now going to be up to the full 300. And currently they've got nigh on 600 4S LiPos to charge. And there is more being ordered because they're on about doing more than one display in a, in a night, in a session. So they're going to be looking at somewhere close to maybe 900 batteries 
to obviously look after, cart about, and obviously charge. Hence, these big charging racks. And touch wood, they've proven their worth. Um, they worked out just right. We're so happy we spec the Revo Electric's chargers with the 48 volt supply. They're working nice and efficiently. It's neat, it's tidy, very easy to work on as well. Should anything happen, I need to obviously look at this, I can. So yeah, I just wanted to show show you all what it looked with all three chargers in place. Because this is really nice. First time I've seen it. In fact, I'd only seen it about 15 minutes before I started this video. Because I've only just finished the third one at the bottom and obviously slid it into position and screwed it in place. So that one's done. As usual, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and obviously if you uh, need any uh, charging uh, equipment with regards to your charge cases or whatever... Please give me a shout here at Cool Ice Charge Cases and Powers Boys. Stay safe and I'll see you soon. Cheers. Bye bye.